this uh, came for you in the mail. It's from that lawyer, Cooper Sex. You killed our father. What kind of mother does that to her children? And I'm sorry. I don't know any other way to show it. I mean, I don't know. I think we just started a fucking war, though. What's up, power fans of YouTube? It's your boy Nino, and I'm back with another power video. In this video, I'll be talking about if Monet will survive in season four, the pen drive sucks sense to Young, wet play by the writers when it comes to Ghost, if Ken was hit by Braden, the war ahead, and how 2 Beat is likely to join force with Tariq and Tommy and everything episode 10. And of course, if you are new to my channel, you're welcome. Kindly hit the subscribe button, like, share, leave your thoughts in the comment section. If you already subscribed, thanks for the support. Now let's get straight into the topics. First off, this season finale has been one of the best so far in power history, filled with a lot of expectations for the next season and possible crossovers in book four. Maybe that was why they pushed Tommy's show to September. I don't know about you, but I believe most of you love the season finale. I made a post on my page here on YouTube on how you will rate the entire season 3. If you haven't seen it, go check it out and vote as well. As you can see, majority are rating the season as 5 star. How about you? Drop your comment in the comment section below. Now, the season ended with the beginning of a war between Taharis and Norma against Tariq and Braden. This scene is something I would describe as world apart. I don't think there is any way these people will work with each other again other than work against each other. The betrayal and the fuse are very deep that it can only be one crew against the other. Now, before I move on to the future of this war, I want to talk about Monet and whether she will survive season four or not. Now, what do you think? For me, I think Monet has done everything for her selfish self, for her children, and she has explored a lot of things already. And at this point, it will only be the same old story when it comes to her. What do I mean? Let's look at all her transitions. Monet transitioned from being a wife to Lorenzo to sleeping with a cop that is Ramirez, hence the unfaithful wife. She was the boss until Lorenzo came back and we all experienced her as the boss. We saw her as not the boss when Lorenzo came back. We also saw how Monet lied about Zeke being her son, what she turned into when her beloved son died, the killings, the betrayal, she committing co matricide, threatening her children to kill them, killing her ex and her son's father. I can go on and on on and on. For me, the only situation we haven't seen Monet yet is wearing the orange jumpsuit. Apart from that, I think Monet has exhausted her character traits and keeping her for another season will not be anything new. I said this about Sars before the beginning of season 3 that he has nothing more to offer than getting a bullet and it did happen. So trust me on this one too when I say Monet is close to the end of the road. Whatever reason Tasha has for killing Monet, she has to make sure she finishes the job. I mean, how did you even find me? Your buddy, Monet Tahada. She dropped me a message. Tasha will do anything to protect her son. If I am Tasha and Monet is still alive, I'll find every means to finish the job. Now, if Tasha can't finish the job, who else can finish the job without being seen? 2-Bit. I think 2-Bit can perfectly be the one to off Monet at the hospital. And I think it's time these writers get more scenes for 2-Bit so he can assist Tariq moving forward. I know lots of people expect Tommy to come to Tariq's aid in New York now, and this brings me to the first word play in this finale. This ain't my war. Plus, in New York, I'm already dead. The writers are not only reminding Tariq that Tommy can't start a war in New York, but they want us to understand that there is a new setting for Tommy now in Chicago with different enemies, friends, and families. Matter of fact, he's an actual uncle to JP's sons now, so there is no way he will just come back to New York and start some war with Tariq. Tommy can assist in one-day situations that will not expose him in New York, but I don't think the writers will want Tommy to stay long in New York trying to help Tariq, because Tariq will always find himself from one trouble to the other. So for me, I think the person that can stick more with Tariq is 2Bit. Now, Tariq can use Tommy to convince 2Bit to back him up in New York provided Tommy himself will not need the services of 2Bit in Chicago since Liliana is dead and he will need a trusted person in his team. Now, if Tariq gets Tommy to convince 2Bit to back him up, then 2Bit is the best person to finish Monet at the hospital since no one knows him and can tie him to Tariq. Don't forget, Diana already knows that it wasn't Tariq that shot their mother. Now, Ken will know very 
world that Tariq will be very foolish enough to want to come anywhere near the hospital. But if Diana insists on them hiding their mother from Tariq so he won't finish her, it will raise suspicion to the fact that Tariq is not the only threat to Monet's life. And I also believe this secret between Drew and Diana will surely come to light. Let me know what you also think in the comment section. Do you think it's time for Monet to go or you still think she has more to offer in the coming seasons? Now let's talk about the war Tariq and Braden just started. Obviously, Braden is fully in the game now knowing even his western privileges has been a Ponzi. Let's look at the people at war first. Braden and Tariq are up against a lot of people. That is Kane, Drew, Diana, Monet and that is if she still makes it alive. Efe, Norma, and her goons. Now, as for Obi, I think his loyalty to Norma is questionable. He's the only one who can help Tariq with any information moving forward, even though he paid his dues to Tariq by giving Braden that tip. And oh, I wish this Braden scene was the reintroduction of Ghost saving his son. Just imagine Braden's role was played by Ghost here like stars would have crashed the internet in the whole world by now. But anyways, it was still nice to see Braden come through for Tariq just like Ghost always does for Tommy. But personally, I believe this was a Ghost move. Now from my count, Tariq is at war against 6 people. If Obi is on Norman's side, that makes it 7 without Norman's soldiers. Now let's say Tariq and Braden are at war against 7 bloodthirsty people. Mathematically, that would be 2 against 7 remaining 5 people on Tariq's sides to make the equation balance. Now, as we speak, definitely these two cannot win the war. Now, in the meantime, I believe both Braden and Tariq are on the run for their lives, so Stansfield won't be a hiding place for them. Now, if Tasha joins her son, that makes them 3. Now, who can be added to Team Tariq? Possibly 2 bits. That brings the number to 4. If they involve Tommy and he wants to help fight this Teharas and Norma, then Tommy will have to bring his friends from Chicago including his brother JP to assist. Maybe that is when we'll see Tommy introducing his brother to Tasha and Tariq. This is one of the ways I believe Tariq can win this war. Let me know what you also think in the comment section below. Now let's expand this last scene. Was Kane hit during the shootout? Obviously not. The first shot from Braden hit the gun from Kane, so definitely Kane wasn't hit. There was another shot towards Kane again, but I still don't believe Kane was hit. I believe Norma is safe, Efe is safe, Diana is equally safe, and Drew as well. But if the writer wants to be extra, then I believe Obi is hit because of the way he was covering Norma. Other than that, then I believe Obi is equally safe. Now, who has been hit? One of Norman's men was hit so I believe he will bleed out and possibly die. So let me also know what you think about who is safe and who is not safe in the comment section below. Now let's move on to Paz making an appearance and the drive sacks left behind for Young. I did a video some month back when Detective Young first reappeared that there is a possibility that he was Ghost and Angela's son and not Paz's son as we all made to believe. Lots of people agree with my theory but some people disagree as well and that is cool. Now after watching episode 10, people begin to find my theory meaningful and possible. Now, in that video, I stated that we would definitely see Paz making an appearance this season because of Junior and she was shown in episode 10. So let's say a little more on them. First of all, pay attention to Paz's statement about Young and how she made sure she brought Angela into the credit. But I am so proud that you followed in Angela's footsteps. Yeah, I know. And Angela would be proud too. I know someone will say she did that because she was the one who paid his tuition fee. So it is right for Paz to make sure that Angela is giving the necessary credit to Junior's achievements. Yes, that's okay. But let me counter you with this argument. Sachs made sure he sent every information to people who are entitled to them and also people who can easily help him deliver those messages to the right owners. When it comes to Detective Young, Sachs has no business with this kid that he will send him an information if it has nothing to do with him. Besides, if you study the pattern to which Sachs planned his exit, everything was pointing towards Tariq and against Tariq apart from the love letter he wrote to Jenny. So I believe whatever is on that pen drive has everything to do with Tariq and Junior himself. The irony of the whole thing is that whatever is on the drive was brought to him by Paz. So if it's an expose that he never knew, the writers just give us a clue by making his mother pass to deliver that to him. Now why do I think so? If Sachs wanted Jenny to have any information about Tariq that would lead to his arrest, he would have added it to his letter to her or share with Blanca 
or even Medina. But I believe the content of this drive is probably not criminal, but a whole twist to Tariq's life that he has a brother who is in the DEA and after him. Why else would Sax send Detective Young a confidential content on a drive? Who knows, it might be a video Sax made telling Young about the truth he discovered long ago when he was working with Angela. And I believe the writers would like to keep Sax's memory with the audience as the one who revealed a big twist in the whole power universe. So whatever the content is, trust me, it will always make we the audience constantly remember Sax in the coming season. For me, I believe Sax has a huge bomb on that drive and I believe they left it unopened for season 4 because everyone opened the content of their envelope from Sax apart from Junior. So for me, I still stand by my initial theories with regards to Junior being Angela and Ghost's son and Sax is the perfect person to expose this secret while in his grief. And if you check Junior's cast name at the end of the credits, he is called Angel Junior Young. Names like this is what Kane would describe as made the fucker and I don't believe they named him Angel for nothing since his aunt is called Angela. This coincidence is a bit suspicious to me. I don't know about you, but let me know what you also think in the comment section below. Now, earlier I stated that there has been a lot of wordplay in this season finale. One of them is when Tasha defended Ghost to Tariq. Yeah, but you know he didn't do that shit right now. No, no, no. Ghost was a lot of things, but he wasn't stupid. Now, I feel this is beyond giving Ghost credit. To me, they have started easing the good things about Ghost that suggest that Tariq is a match to his father. And if Ghost has to come back, he won't just pop up like that. They will tease us with statements like this. Over the years, the audience were thinking that Tommy knew Ghost was alive, but what I see the writers doing is that they are playing every character to be innocent or ignorant about Ghost's survival so that if he eventually comes back, they will have a lot of stories to tell around him, Tommy, Tariq, Tasha, even Yaz, Tate, and so forth. That is why you hear Tommy saying Tariq killed his father. You killed your father, so pulling the trigger on me ain't gonna be nothing to you. And in most of my videos on Ghost, I stated that it would be very unrealistic if Tommy knows that Ghost is still alive. So if they ever want to bring Ghost back, and I believe they will, it must come as a shock to every character in the show and the audience as well. That is how best they can feel and relate to the emotions of the characters as well on Ghost coming back. Let me know what you also think in the comment section below. Now, in my last video, I stated that the only way Lauren can survive is not to testify. Turn out that I wasn't far from how the writers were thinking. Now, we see Lauren leaving town with her parents and I believe she will come back in the future. It's been an amazing season and thank you guys for sticking around. I'll keep you updated with anything happening in the power universe. And if you have any topic you want me to touch on, drop it in the comment section. If it attracts a lot of likes, I'll do a video on that topic for you guys. Thank you for always supporting guys. Really appreciate everyone. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Turn on your notification bell to get notified on my next video. Like, share. Most importantly, leave your thoughts in the comment section. Catch you in my next video. It's your boy Nino. Thanks for watching.